For all its different styling and well-kitted interiors and above average spec, Lexus hasn't really caught on in South Africa. This is the latest IS which competes against the BMW 3 Series. And to give you an idea just how much people don't consider Lexus when spending half a million rand on a mid-size luxury sedan, in September 2015, Lexus sold 30 of those cars. BMW sold over 800 3 Series. For all their smaller range and less extensive dealer network, I'm sure that Lexus head office in Japan must still be wondering what on earth they have to do to try get through to the South African car buyer, and wondering if they'll ever reach that level of brand loyalty, which leads people to completely ignore the options they have when parting with over half a million rand. And at the same time, they must be really daunted by the task that lies ahead of them. When you think about it, even if they found some magic bullet that increased their sales by 500%, they'd still be selling less than a quarter of the number of their biggest competition. But when Lexus launched the new IS in 2013, they issued a statement that showed that they weren't scared of the task that lay ahead of them. They said they wanted the IS to be the class leader in driver enjoyment and all the things that that phrase encompasses, which to be clear, is a lot. A good drive is about more than power and solid handling and a nice interior. There is something almost intangible about some cars that leaves you smiling, and it's made up of everything that car delivers. From the moment you see it, to the way it involves you and makes you feel on a challenging road or a long trip, to the moment you look behind you as you walk away. In the interests of not repeating the phrase driver enjoyment, let's call it magic. And to help try to deliver the magic, Lexus has expanded the IS range to now include turbo power. The 200T has a 2 litre 4 cylinder with 180 kilowatts, 350 newton meters, and they're really hoping it's going to breathe something special into the IS range. If you'll pardon the pun. The problem, in inverted commas, is that there really isn't anything wrong with the naturally aspirated V6 in the 350F Sport version of this car. In fact, it's a very nice motor, with good power through the rev range and a very nice soundtrack. The likelihood of this turbo motor delivering the magic isn't that high, because compared to its big brother, it's less powerful and a little slower in the 0-100 stakes. It also has slightly less torque, but it still feels decently strong. The twin scroll turbo doesn't deliver eye-popping acceleration, but what is there is smooth and constant. And Lexus have really tried to squeeze every last drop of performance out of this thing by doing things like positioning the intercooler for the best possible response. And they've added five extra kilowatts. This is the same 2.0-litre turbo that's in their NX SUV, but in there it only puts out 175 kilowatts. Sure, 5 kilowatts might not sound like a whole hell of a lot, but it does tell you that Lexus weren't going to just sit back and make do with what they had. They really wanted to make this thing as good as it possibly could be. And in that vein, there are some other minor changes that you wouldn't think would do very much, but they do add to the drivability. The 8-speed gearbox in this car is the same as the one in the RC. In that car, it is disappointing, but in here it feels a lot better, a bit more responsive, a bit more engaging, with the blips on the downshifts. It still has the annoying habit of basically ignoring your paddle shifts, unless you're in manual mode, though. In a very short space of time, it becomes apparent that the IS is a very serious attempt by Lexus to deliver some very tangible magic. And there's more. One thing Lexus have got right on almost all their models is the handling, which is a great mix between smooth and soft when you want it to be, and decently capable when you need it to be. In here, it's almost indecently capable. We've really pushed this car on some very unforgiving roads, and it's just soaked it all up and kept on delivering. The IS200T's chassis is a superb thing, always delivering confident grip with sharp, accurate turn-in, but without sacrificing even so much as a crumb of comfort. The only extra bit that's been added is a new performance damper setup, which helps with body roll. Of course, part of any car's magic is the way it looks and feels when it's standing still. The IS scores big for trying something different, for being a little more out there than its competition without being odd. The 200T gets its own set of unique wheels, and the package as a whole makes a solid impression. I still don't get the line at the rear of the car that makes it look like two halves have been bolted together, but that's just me. As for the interior, well, 
it's a Lexus. Available in two spec levels, the IS200T features everything you'd expect and then some. Even the less equipped E model gets electric heated and ventilated seats and park distance control all round. The space is good, the comfort is high, and although some of the plastics still feel a little less than premium, it's a very nice place to be. Safety has been boosted by the addition of rear side airbags. But please, Lexus, do something about the remote touch interface. It's a nice idea, but it's in dire need of an overhaul. Using it is still fiddly, and the graphics are starting to look a bit Nintendo 64. Uh, for anyone under 30, that means they're looking dated. The 200T might be the baby of the IS range, but thanks to its turbo motor and some chassis tweaks, it does deliver a very good drive. In fact, I'd say that's the most enjoyable Lexus I've ever driven, and it certainly has some magic. It's not miraculously going to close the sales gap to its rivals, but that has more to do with the people buying cars, and not the car itself. The 2.0-litre turbo in the Lexus IS200T isn't a brute of an engine, but its 180 kilowatts is delivered consistently. It's matched by the smooth, quick shifts of the 8-speed auto gearbox. There's very little difference in terms of style and interior setup, and even though this is the baby Lexus, it's still very well specced. It's also a very good drive, with just the right balance of power and grip. Some interior plastics could be better though. <laughs> 